Yeah. I feel that is going to keep me safe. Coaches are very oh, yeah. persistent on that, keeping us two yards apart, and it's really like, easy to tell two yards since we have the football field. Alamo Heights volleyball player Ruby O'Brien feels safe working out on campus with other student athletes in big board sports. The Wagner boys basketball team was honored by the UIL yesterday, but the boys basketball tournament canceled due to COVID-19. The UIL is honoring every state team with a virtual awards ceremony. The Thunderbirds received a trophy that reads state championships, along with some medals to commemorate their accomplishment. Not playing at the Alamo Dome was a tough blow for Wagner and its 12 seniors who advanced the state for the second straight season and third time in four years. Head coach Rodney Clark got choked up during the Zoom presentation when talking about those young men. It was hard for me to uh, find words to uh, comfort my guys. Um, and uh, I look forward to watching them next year, you know, in their future endeavors. And also um, for my returners, you know, we're going to work hard, you know, start whenever we can get back in that gym and uh, try to finish the race for next year. UIL also recognized the Cole Cougars who advanced to the Class 3A state tournament. The Cougars got to play their state semifinal, beating Peaster 58-44, advancing to face Dallas Madison in the straight state 3A final. Cole was also presented a trophy that says state championships. First of all, I'd like to, you know, definitely thank UIL for everything they've done. Um, I know it's an unfortunate situation that we were put in, um, but, you know, having this and being able to celebrate our guys and their achievements they've had this year, is, um, I, know it's been, I know it's very important for us. Brandeis boys will get their virtual ceremony today at 2 for advancing to the Class 6A state tournament. You know, we've been busy this week stopping by high schools to catch up with head coaches and student athletes now that the UIL is allowing voluntary workouts, and it's been awesome. Alamo Heights volleyball player Ruby O'Brien, like many athletes, is thrilled to be back on campus for strength and conditioning drills. It feels amazing just seeing everybody and like enjoying the fresh air and finally like working out with someone else and not just having to work out on a Google Meet or just like work out virtually. I haven't seen them in a while, probably a few months now, and it's just fun seeing them, like talking with them face to face and just getting more like friendship, connecting with them. It is a big day for Cornerstone Christian quarterback Lucas Coley. He will make his announcement tonight live here on KSAT 12, where he's going to college for an education and to play football. He has 30 plus offers, and according to 24 7 Sports Composite Rankings, he is a three star prospect, the number 19 dual threat quarterback in the nation, and the number 94 overall player in the state of Texas. That's live tonight around 6:20. Right here, wow. on KSAT 12. That'll be, that'll be awesome. Yeah, we'll that. be out at uh, the Coley's Casa. It'll be like one of those it. big, big pull out the hat things. And I'm not exactly sure how he's going to do it yet. I don't know if he's going to have it on, flip it around, or if he's going to have it in his hand and put it on. You'll have to tune in, David, tonight and watch. We'll be watching it. <laughs> now that's a tease right, right there. Thanks, Larry. Hey, it's National Corn on the Cob Day, and you know who's ready for it? I say live, of course. I hope they've got some dental floss. Plus, Aquatica and SeaWorld San Antonio opening up, and we're getting a first look. Hey, Mike and Fiona. Today on SA Live, Jen heads out to Aquatica San Antonio to get the latest on their reopening this weekend. Plus, they're updating their protocols to keep customers safe. And SeaWorld has an animal that sets the standard for fathers everywhere. Plus, it's National Corn on the Cob Day, so we want to know, how do you eat your corn on the cob? Across or around? As I demonstrate with the prop here. Great use of or imagination. Yum. And wedding season is upon us. We give you some tips on how to prepare for your nuptials in this rather unusual season. It's always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> And don't forget, it's a thirsty Thursday. We head to Southtown to enjoy some refreshing sips at a one-of-a-kind bar. And as you are imbibing on those luscious cocktails, don't forget to stream us at KSAT.com. All that and more today on SA Live. You like the fancy words? Big words. <laughs> Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV.
man in Dripping Springs, Texas, just west of Austin, trying to help people make sense of the recent protests. Nifa Kaniga, who is a black man, has been standing on a street corner for three days now. He has a sign that says, ask me anything. Kaniga says he wants people to ask uncomfortable questions because talking about race and politics in America is an uncomfortable subject. He says he hopes the discussions will allow people to have more empathy for one another's points of view. If you'd like to learn more, just head over to KSAT.com. Streaming right now on KSET TV, meet the activist who is now working daily with the mayor to fight racial injustice. Farrell Clark helped calm protesters at last week's city council meeting. He breaks down what protesters are still calling for in an extended interview. Download the app on your Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, or Smart TV for this story and more bonus footage and interviews. And it's been a rapid warm up today. We started off in the uh, 60s, low 60s here in San Antonio, but we're going to be up around, well, I'd say at this point, maybe a little bit higher than 94. We're sitting at 92 at this hour. 93 coming up tomorrow, 94 Saturday, 94 Sunday. So a warm stretch, but we'll have some nice mornings. It's not until the middle part of next week that we start to get humidity turning back or returning back to South Texas now to create a little bit more cloud cover. But a very quiet forecast rain wise, nothing there over the next seven days, guys. You know, Justin, a few weeks ago, you never got a break. It was just one storm after another. Now he's just, just normal. hanging out. He might give up the, the veil because I don't think he wanted to get any corn on the cob juice all over it. So oh, yeah? He's, he's ready to go. I, I cut the corn off the cob. Do you? I do. Is that cheating? That's not fun. you got to just dig in and get it all over you, all over your face. It gets in my teeth. Well, well, it's not good. That's why you got dental floss, right? That's our show for now for we'll all of us at 12. Yeah, we'll find I'm out. I'm glad we just, <laughs> we just took the veil off of that. Literally. Literally. <laughs> all right, it's going to start right now. Thank you. Well, speaking of veils, wedding bells are ringing once again. What you need to know if you've been waiting to tie the knot and how you can save money on an intimate gathering. It's another Thirsty Thursday. We hit up Southtown and tell you where you can get these refreshing summer sips and even share a Father's Day deal with you. And Aquatica San Antonio starts reopening this weekend. Jen is out there for a splashing good time and she'll be hanging out with some cute and cuddly critters. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from the KSET 12 studios. This is SA Live. Hello, that looks so good. I haven't had corn on the cob in a long time. Hi, happy, let me get back to the script. Happy Thursday, it is National Corn on the Cob Day, otherwise known as make sure you have dental floss in your pocket day. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone, I'm Mike Osterage. Sometimes even one of those picks are needed, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, but it is so good. And I'm Fiona Gorsiza, and because of Corn on the Cob Day, we are going to highlight a few places you can get um, some around town. Yeah, nice little ear of corn. So, question of the day, we wanna know, how do you eat your corn on the cob? So, do you go across like a typewriter? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, no, you, no. You, everybody no, didn't know no, that. No, or do you go around? And it's funny, I was just reading about this, and they mm -hmm. said some people think going around because it kind of cools off from the end. So, if you nibble on the ends first, then you can hang on to it a little bit better and go toward the inside. Oh, see, I go around, but from the middle out. Really? Yeah. No, I just go <laughs> a across. Ding. Yeah. And, <laughs> just ding. And you, and you go on the top row or the row behind? Yeah, I mean, this is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let us know. It's Weigh quite a in question. at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see how it all shakes down a little later in the show. And then do you also take it and just roll it in a whole stick of butter and put it on? Yeah, like that. So, hey, there's many great places around town to eat, but deciding where to go isn't always easy. And of course, Father's Day is coming up. It is a week from Sunday, just to make sure you know. So, on this week's Elder Eats, our David Elder put together a list of restaurants for Father's Day. Your day. Yeah. <laughs> Father's Day is right around the corner, and to get you ready, here's a list of restaurants offering something for every dad to enjoy. Chamagacha Brazilian Steakhouse is offering two ways to enjoy their select cuts of prime steaks at home and dine in. The grill at home selections are pricey, but you can get the taste of a high-end steakhouse in your backyard. Dining in requires guests to adhere to the current CDC and restaurant guidelines for physical distancing. My favorite cut from Chamagacha is the bottom sirloin. Absolutely delicious and tender. You get one of those, dad's gonna be real happy. 
Carmen's De La Calle is offering jambalaya and a rum cocktail available for pickup on Father's Day. Go to their website to order and to make sure dad gets a fun taste of Cajun cuisine. Carmen will make her Creole version of jambalaya, a dish said to have originated during the four decades of Spain's control of Louisiana as an attempt to make paella in the new world. Whether you're celebrating Father's Day or you just want to try some delicious jambalaya, take advantage of this curbside pickup and to go. In New Braunfels, Silver Spoon is offering a Dad's Day beer brunch. The three-course meal comes with an option of a beer pairing for an additional cost, but with or without beer, this meal will be delicious. Head to their website now to make reservations, and when you're dining in, it requires that you adhere to current CDC and restaurant guidelines for physical distancing. I declare is getting dad ready for the big day with a grilling pack that feeds eight to 10 people. It includes two 13 ounce hand cut ribeyes, four brisket burger patties, four local bratwurst, four seasoned corn on the cob, four marinated veggie skewers, compressed watermelon salad, four hamburger buns, four hot dog buns, Ida's secret seasoning pack, and natural charcoal. It's a bit pricey at 100 bucks, but will keep dad happy and busy on the grill. Now for an additional 30 bucks, you can add an old fashioned cocktail kit to go. And as a dad, you know you wanna sip on something delicious all day during Father's Day, come on. Smoke the restaurant is serving up a Father's Day barbecue special perfect for curbside or dine-in. To make reservations for the platter or to dine-in, head to their website or social media and follow the links. Dining-in requires guests to adhere to current CDC and restaurant guidelines for physical distancing. There are a lot more hot deals and offerings available in the area, and to get more information, follow Elder Eats on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So keep eating San Antonio. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And for SA Live, I'm David Elder. You know, some of those kits aren't bad when you think about it, because mm -hmm. that way you're not going, oh, I forgot. Oh, right. wait, yeah. Right? So that looks, it's all there. That looks pretty pretty darn tasty too. All right, for more information, head over to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Mm -hmm. Well, it has been hot outside, but what better way to cool off than a dip in the water? Speaking of a great way to cool off in the water, Sea World, San Antonio's Aquatica is reopening starting this weekend, and our Jen Tobias Strusky is there right now to give us an update on getting in the water. Hey, Jen. Yes, you are right about that. It is hot out here. I have Chuck Crow here, marketing leader for Aquatica and SeaWorld. And Chuck, it's open. Aquatica is open. Aquatica <laughs> is open. After a temporary closure, we have opened our gates and we want you to come out and have a, have fun and enjoy all the great things that people have come to expect from Aquatica. Now, there's, some, there's a new reservation system, so you have to go online to Aquatica.com and reserve your day because uh, we have a limited capacity so that we can ensure safe social distancing. You wear your mask, but once you get in there, Jen, you take that mask down, yes. sit out on the beach, yes. get your tan on if you want to, <laughs> and of course you can enjoy all the amazing rides at Aquatica. Yes, so that's the nice thing about the water is you can't really, you can't take the mask in no, the water. So no, you no. have a new, a new slide over there, so we let's did. talk about that. Earlier this year we premiered Tonga Twister. It's amazing. Now imagine going into a tube chute. So you get in there, cross your arms, cross your legs, you go down, and normally it's dark in there. Well, this one has neat lighting uh, uh, effects as you go through. So it's like going through, I don't know, a club. So it's got the, the lights going. And then on top of that, popular music. So you're going down there. It, it is, it's like being at the club. <laughs> as you're going down there, listening to music, seeing the lights. Of course, we have a lazy river that you can just cool down. Mm -hmm. We have a beach that has waves. There's a little bit of something for everyone in Aquatica. And I see lots of families out here. It's 25% capacity, but SeaWorld will be opening on the 19th, just on in time. On the 19th, yeah, we just released that. Just in time for Father's Day, June 19th. You can go online at SeaWorld.com and make reservations to come on out and enjoy the presentations, enjoy the rides, and do so safely. Come on out. And the animals. I mean, the, the park's been closed, but you guys have been working hard to take care of those animals. I tell you, Jen, the, the zoological staff has been working, and sometimes they work 24-7, you know, around the clock to take care of these animals. Just because the gates are closed doesn't mean that we can walk away and do whatever. we got to take care of these animals, and they've been working very, very hard, of course, with, with all the whales and dolphins and the sea lions, the sharks, and even, even the birds. Got it. So the 19th SeaWorld, and speaking of animals, I hear you have some animals that are great fun. Others. 
and we're going to go check those out here That's right. in a little bit, right? SeaWorld opening up just in time for <laughs> Father's Day. We're going to introduce you to some great fathers a little bit later. All right. For more information, SeaWorld.com. And remember, get that reservation in. And it looks like a good time. I want to go jump in the water right now, Chuck. All right. Back to you guys. Uh, and just as Jen said, yes, we are going to be checking in with her a little later in the show to find out what adorable animal she's going to be hanging out with. Yeah, I'm curious. I know, yeah, right? I know, the great, really great good father. father. Mm. 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 Still ahead on SA Live, we revisit a story about two local brothers making their way through the music industry. And it's a thirsty Thursday. We check out a spot in Southtown for some refreshing drinks. That's next on SA Live. Welcome back, everyone. Well, it is a Thirsty Thursday, and we head to a beautiful spot in Southtown for some tasty sips. This week, we are at the San Antonio Magazine's 2020 winner for best dog-friendly fun and best happy hour, the good kind. a really cool botanical cocktail selection. I always say, you know, we have healthy cocktails. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that too. <laughs> we don't use a lot of sugar, we use all real ingredients. Our best selling cocktail is our hibiscus lime margarita, which it's fresh pressed lime. We make our own hibiscus syrup tequila and mix that up. And so the hibiscus syrup is the sweet part of it, so we don't have to use simple syrup. And it's, yeah, it's super refreshing, super delicious. Beautiful color. This is my very favorite drink and our number two selling drink. And I came up with this, it's made, we have a cold pressed juice program. So we sell these juices and I was like, hey, let's do our botanical cocktails with the juices. So this juice is made with fresh turmeric root, pineapple, ginger, a little coconut water, and lime. And we, this juice is the, our anti-inflammatory juice. So I'm always like, oh, the anti-inflammatory cocktail. You know, you feel good about drinking it. It's amazing. It's like bubbly and fresh and light and has a really like nice punch of flavor. Our frozen margarita is made with fresh juice, lemon, lime, and orange. We use three fresh pressed juices. It's, uh, we call it our citrus margarita. We are very fortunate that we have a huge amount of outdoor space and we always had our tables really spaced well. So I think people obviously are feeling a lot more comfortable about coming and sitting outside. And we really took our downtime to, you know, we um, redid our tent, we're putting in fans and misters, we have fans, we're making it into very, you know, summer Shangri-La. Very good options for everybody on our menu. If you know, I always say to people, you know, how many times do you go out nowadays and know everyone's like, I just eat everything. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> it's like yeah. people that have any kind of special things, but we also have the fun kind of indulge thing. So we have a really beautiful market bowl that is fresh veggies and black rice. I really tried to curate the menu to have something for everyone. We've added a lot more fun bar snacks on lately. We have cauliflower wings that are like a sticky Asian cauliflower wing with peanuts. Everyone can find, we also just have a burger. So everybody can find something. We really, because we have so much space that we can use, we started right away doing socially distanced events. I really feel like everybody needs like, whatever, we all know, right? We've been locked up. We're doing a, a speed dating series, like a socially distant speed dating series. And we're doing an outdoor movie series in conjunction with Slab Cinemas. But you know, definitely check out our Facebook and Instagram page because we're doing a lot of events. Boy, those cocktails look good. Hey, and you want something really tasty to go with it. The Good Kind is also offering local food for curbside pickup. They're doing a slow smoked brisket for Father's Day from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the 21st. For more information on The Good Kind, just head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And as much as we love local food on the show, we also love our local musicians. A while back, our Gen Tobias Strusky met up with the Peterson brothers to share their story. 
the smooth sounds, the uncontrollable movement. This is what feeling the music looks like. Being able to bring a good energy and trying to put it out to the audience and just make everyone feel good and have a good time and spread that around on stage between all of us, between me and him and whoever we have on drums or keyboard or whoever else is on stage with us. So, so this is all about having a good time, really. Led by Glenn Jr. and Alex Peterson, these brothers have music flowing through their veins. Whenever you have a family member up there, like it takes literally probably for us all of that edge off. That's why whenever we go in front of these crowds, I don't, you know, neither of us get nervous because like I said, if nothing else is like we're going to look at each other, we're going to have fun and that's going to be it. And how they, you know, receive it is how they receive it. And it's always, you know, a great thing that people feel what's coming off the stage and then get it back. Watching them perform at Historic Green Hall in New Braunfels is a full on jam style band session with a combination of soul, funk, blues, and jazz. It's like we're going to look at each other, we're going to have fun, and that's going to be it. And how they, you know, receive it is how they receive it. And it's always, you know, a great thing that people feel what's coming off the stage and then get it back. Oh, you can definitely feel it in here. They play at Historic Green Hall in New Braunfels once a month. Just 20 and 22 years old, the Peterson brothers started playing music at age 9 and 12. They caught on pretty quickly and were able to open up for B.B. King here at Green Hall when they were just 12 and 14. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. That's like, that like a first big opening show. Yeah. Tell me about so, that. Yeah, well, How was that? Uh, first of all, we're just grateful to Green Hall just because we've done a lot of, I mean, we've really gotten a chance to build a resume here from B.B. King to Los Only Boys to Chubby Checker. Lisa Marie uh, Presley. Yeah, Lisa Marie Presley. That was an awesome show. Just yeah. just being a part of all those shows and getting to do nights nice shows like that. But the B.B. King one was amazing. They credit a very supportive family in this journey to success. Going along with their grandma to yard sales, they discovered vinyl records at a young age. I don't know how, but we picked up the Brothers Johnson, the Brothers Johnson, um, and it was like their hit record right on time with Strawberry Letter, the Sugar Hills cover. It was that Earth, Wind & Fire, Gratitude. It was like a best of BB King on vinyl. It was two of like the later 70s, early 80s Osley Brothers records. And that's kind of what got us started on the type of music that we do. This passion for performing runs deep. You'll see it in their demeanor on stage, the eye contact, the movement. Um, really, it just came from us wanting to try it out and just coming from a very, very supportive household. Just mom and dad were just super supportive of us doing, even our older brother doing anything positive. So. More recently, they've been able to go on tour with Gary Clark Jr., opening them up to a whole new world of entertaining. It's amazing, you know, it's just like between like him, his family, and everyone on his crew and all his band members, they're all like big brothers, just like extended family to us. You know. We'll see where this love for music takes them. None of it's really worked to us, even the working part, like practicing, you know, trying to get a song down, trying to finish a song writing wise. I think music is definitely our sanctuary. I don't look at it as anything that we have to jump hurdles over. Those guys are only 20 and 22? Wow. Mm. Huh. Huh. Hey, the Peterson Brothers are performing a virtual concert this Saturday, 7 p.m. And for more information on the Peterson Brothers, of course, head to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Hey, still ahead on SA Live if you're ready to tie the knot but need help finding a wedding venue, we have the updates on the wedding season. And next on SA Live, for those heading off to college, Shriner University breaks down how they are accommodating students in the new normal. Schools shut down during the pandemic, but some of those schools are now looking to reopen their campuses. Today, Shriner University is getting the word out about safety measures for its students as it prepares to reopen its campus. University President Dr. Charlie McCormick joins us now to tell us more. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Glad to be here. 
Tell us, how are you going to ensure the safety for students returning to school? Well, safety is absolutely our first priority for both our students and our uh, employees here at Shriner. And so we believe that by leaning heavily to some safety protocols that we can provide students with uh, as normal as possible an experience this fall semester. We're going to lean heavily on, on things like um, uh, screening mechanisms as well as testing. We intend to test students when they arrive on campus as well as throughout the semester. And though while none of us believe the fall semester will be entirely normal, that if we lean in heavily in those areas that students will be able to enjoy that rich residential educational experience they love. Uh, tell us a little bit about, and I know this might be something a lot of folks are thinking, what about the living situation for students? Are you opening dorms? We will be opening both our apartments as well as our residence halls. And this is one of the benefits of being a highly residential campus that's been growing over the last several years. Uh, this year, we're gonna have enough capacity on campus to give each student his or her own room and we'll have a two to one student to bathroom ratio. So that'll not only give students a lot of additional space, but it'll also uh, help provide us another measure of safety for students. Are, are temperature checks going to be done? Uh, temperature checks will be done next uh, fall semester. And in fact, temperature checks are being done on campus. I have my wristband on today showing that uh, I was, had my temperature check when I came in. It's the sort of thing that seems a little awkward at first, but quickly becomes part of the normal routine and, and gives us one of the first and best ways to see if um, any student may have a symptom that we need to be aware of. And medical care for students. What about that? Yeah, so Shriner is very fortunate to have a wonderful partner here in Kerrville in the Hill Country Peterson Regional Medical Center, which actually provides our campus clinic and staffs that campus clinic. Uh, several years ago, Shriner made the decision to uh, go to a locked in tuition model, and it, that model is inclusive of all the sorts of things uh, that are typically charged for on other campuses. So our students don't pay for textbooks in addition, they don't pay an additional fee for laundry, and they don't pay an additional fee for their use of the clinic. So we're glad to have this partner and glad to make this very accessible to our students. Now, class sizes at Shriner University have always been pretty small, which is which is great for the students. Is the pandemic affecting that as well? Well, we'll continue to have small classes. And, and again, that's a benefit, I think, of uh, the smaller campus. Uh, we're going to probably make them even smaller. Certainly some sections we will. So we'll practice social distancing in those uh, classrooms. Shriner's also been an a institution that's had virtual um, courses and programs online for several years. And we're going to um, work with our faculty. And in fact, they're working right now over the summer to create more virtual learning opportunities for students and hybrid models. But for students looking to apply to colleges who couldn't take the SAT or ACT tests, how will they be affected? Well, uh, Shriner's never been precious about the ACT or the SAT scores. It was one component of a student's uh, capacity, but not the, doesn't give us the whole picture. And so we were one of the first schools in the state to say that we weren't going to consider ACT and SAT scores in a student's admissions. University President Dr. Charlie McCormick, thank you so much for your time. For more information on Shriner University, just give them a call at 830-896-5411 or visit their website, shriner.edu. You. Charlie, thank you again and stay safe. Thank you. All right, coming up a little bit later on, Jen's out there at SeaWorld finding an adorable little animal who's very formal looking to snuggle with. And next up, we share some helpful tips on this year's wedding season. Welcome back, everyone. Well, of course, many area event venues are redoing their whole ceremony packages. As we all know, anyone looking to tie the knot over the past couple of months had to postpone or lose out on something that took a lot of planning. Yes, indeed. Today, our Jen Tobias Trusky shares how some venues are getting really creative to accommodate smaller parties, and one local company shares some helpful tips to throw your own backyard gathering. Take a look. Saying I do has been put on hold, but now that venues are opening up, that means more couples are reconsidering their celebration and venues are rolling with the changes. The celebrations don't have to end 
it's a very, very special time for these um, couples, and we're here to help them celebrate in any way that we can. So obviously so many people had to put the weddings on hold, and Don Street, you guys have a really great package right now. Um, I'm sure you were struggling through this, but also these couples who had these big plans. So what are you guys doing right now to help them out? We have had weddings that were on the books that were larger numbers for right now, you know, three, four hundred people weddings. So um, for the promotion at River Rock, um, for $5,000 for up to 50 guests, that includes the venue itself, which has a ceremony space. It includes the tables and chairs and linens. Um, it includes chairs for ceremony with social distancing protocol taken into consideration. While some couples are holding off altogether, another venue in town, Scenic Springs, is offering a cottage overnight experience where your small wedding party can stay the night and your whole family can get together for a backyard themed wedding on their grounds, spaced out, of course, with social distancing in mind. And if you're looking to skip a venue altogether, we have some help today from Mitzi Gutierrez, lead planner at Bride on a Budget Event Planners in San Antonio. She went from biomedical engineering to wedding planning. Today, she shares some tips for throwing your own backyard wedding. Um, usually with our backyard weddings at this time, couples are inviting um, parents, siblings, literally just immediate family, maybe a friend or two, but really the rule is to try and keep it at 10 guests or less. Um, my second suggestion for all backyard weddings is it doesn't necessarily have to be at your own backyard. Um, some of the solutions that our couples have been finding is Airbnbs, um, which are currently, you know, being rented out at this time. Um, you know, Airbnbs, beautiful places in the Hill Country, in Bromples, in Wimberley, Spring Branch. Um, and they are very affordable because you're really only renting them out for one day. But there's so many um, beautiful options for decor at places like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart. Walmart, these stores are already open. So don't feel like, oh, you know, you have to hire a florist and all that because it's going to be something so intimate that going to these, you know, stores is super, super great. And um, we have had some of our couples hire a, a guitarist, you know, a, a cello player, a violin player, a player. I mean, it can still be beautiful and intimate and like a real ceremony. Um, even though it is in your backyard. Lastly, um, as far as backyard weddings go, um, lots of like photo and video companies that, you know, traditionally do like wedding videography and photography in San Antonio. Um, they're also offering um, like live streaming services, but with a professional like equipment. So from an intimate guest list to live streaming so everybody can feel like they're included, one thing's for sure, she says, be patient. There is light at the end of the tunnel. For Rusty Live, I'm Jen Tobias Strusky. Well, for more on these venues and event planners, head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Mm -hmm. Still ahead, Jen is chilling out at SeaWorld with some feathery friends dressed in their best. And coming up next, how can Diva Care. care centers are making sure seniors get the health care they need during these times. the state and the city are easing restrictions, we know a lot of you are getting out and about. For our seniors, we know you're looking for safe places to mingle. Conviva Activity Centers have extra precautions in place to make sure you're safe. And joining us now to tell us more is Cynthia Parkinson, Regional Director of the Texas Activity Centers for Conviva. Hey there, Cynthia. Hi, I'm so excited to be here with you to represent Conviva Senior Activity Centers. Tell us a little bit about what Conviva Activity Center exactly is and where folks can find it. Okay, so uh, Conviva Care Centers is a group of primary care physicians who promote health and wellness to seniors in our local community. Not only do our physicians promote health and wellness to our own patients, but they promote this to all seniors 55 plus in the local communities. Uh, Conviva centers are all free to these seniors. So um, we're just so excited to be here and able to share this information with you. 
Now, of course, uh, let's talk about some of the adjustments that you guys have made during the pandemic. Yes. Uh, right now, uh, because of COVID-19, our senior centers are temporarily closed. However, they are going to be opening up slowly in the near future. Uh, first and foremost, of course, Conviva is practicing social distancing and taking safety measures so that any senior coming in for their medical visits is are safe. On our Co Conviva Facebook page, seniors can attend virtual activities. They can attend activity uh, activities such as exercise classes, arts and crafts, how-to videos. Many of our doctors have uh, put together um, educational informational videos for seniors to be up to date on COVID. Uh, while we've been closed though, our activity coordinators have been reaching out daily to our seniors uh, via texting, personal calls, sending virtual, uh, we miss you cards. Uh, we have some very creative seniors uh, and very creative coordinators and together they've made it uh, personal missions to stay in contact together. Uh, the seniors really do appreciate this very much. Now you provide a distribution site for the San Antonio Food Bank. What goes into all that? Yes, uh, Conviva has been partnered up with the San Antonio Food Bank for over five years. Our San Antonio Activity Centers are Project Hope distribution sites. Uh, activity coordinators go to uh, annual training at the food bank uh, so that we can better serve our seniors. Monthly, we give out approximately 50 pounds of food to about 400 seniors. Um, and this is equaling out to about 19,500 pounds of food that we distribute monthly to seniors with food insecurity. Our activity coordinators help seniors to fill out the San Antonio Food Bank applications right there on the site. Um, they will let our seniors know exactly what important documentation needs to be brought with them so that no time is wasted. And a lot of times we can get them on the food participation list for the next month. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, Conviva Activity Centers are free and open to everyone age 55 and wiser. You don't have to be a Conviva patient. For more information, just visit their Facebook page at Conviva Care Centers. You can give them a call at 844-783-0349 and check out their website, convivacarecenters.com. Cindy, thank yes. you so much once again. Thank you. And if each of you could just tell one person about Conviva, Come by and visit us, visit our Facebook page, and it's been my pleasure to be here with you. Next up, Jen is out at SeaWorld and Aquatica. She tells me that she's got an animal that is the perfect dad. Stick around to see a great Father's Day story from the animal kingdom. That's straight ahead on SA Live. Look at how cute that is. Well, earlier Jen was out at Aquatica and now she's trekked across SeaWorld because she heard a sweet story about a father that will do anything for his child. It's such a cool story. How's it going out there, Jen? Yes, exactly. Penguins, we're learning so much about them. The fathers, but also the moms. Oh, okay. Freckles is back to talk too. Right, Freckles? Yes, I have Linda Weisenheimer here with me, and we're talking about penguins today. Not only just how they are great parents, but look what we have here. It's a chick. So tell me about the chick we have here. Okay, so this, believe it or not, is actually a king penguin. Um, if you look right behind you, that's what an adult king penguin looks like. So very different. Look how look at that difference. Wow. This guy's like so a big brown teddy bear, right? Mm -hmm. He's only four months old. So he actually hatched in February. Um, he's been growing pretty steadily, as you can see, ever since. He weighs about 20 pounds right now. Pretty independent at this stage, eating a lot of fish on his own very well. Um, his mom and dad live inside the habitat. An interesting fact about him is his father is actually about 32 years old. Wow. Yeah, and he's got several <laughs> he's like, yes, siblings. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Um, I, we don't really know yet if this is a boy penguin or a girl penguin. And for penguins, the boys and girls look identical. There's no way to look at them and tell. So what we do is when they get old enough to lose all this soft down, the chick feathering and get in their adult black and white waterproof feathers. We'll take a few feathers, we'll send it to a laboratory, they analyze the DNA of the feather and they'll tell us if it's a male or a female. Wow. And since he's only about four months old, 
We do have a few more months before okay. he fledges. So, so we don't quite know if it's a heat, really. We don't really know. <laughs> yes. No, right now it's impossible to tell. And you said the king penguins, they are the only ones in there that walk around with the egg and then they'll transfer it because so, you guys keep track of the nest, yeah. correct? So that's really interesting. Penguins are so fascinating. Um, king penguins are very similar to emperor penguins, the really big ones, in that they only lay one single egg. All other species of penguins are going to lay two. But the king penguins are going to put that one egg on top of their feet and they're going to use something called a brood patch to keep the egg warm. They'll only then have one chick, obviously. But what makes the king penguins different from emperors, and you know a lot of people are more familiar with emperors because of the movies that they've been in, the kings actually stay together the entire breeding season. They're amazing wow. parents. Uh, mom and dad will both take turns incubating oh. the egg, keeping it warm, and then they'll actually both take turns keeping their chick safe as well. Wow. So at this stage, this is still going to be hanging out with mom and dad. Um, they're, they're babies through the entire Southern Antarctic winter. And if you come visit us at SeaWorld, when you're able to, you'll see it's dark in the habitat. Mm -hmm. We keep the lighting cycle exactly like it would be in their natural environment. Mm -hmm. So it's the polar winter, it's dark, but you still have babies like this guy right here. Got it. And then, and it's funny how the size difference here, because you look at the rock hopper here, this is freckles, and uh, we don't have much time left to talk about him, but can you tell me a little bit about Yeah, freckles, freckles is one of my favorite penguins, one of many people's favorite penguins. Super sweet, young, male rock hopper penguin, two and a half years old. Um, he has met countless people because he absolutely loves meeting oh new people. So he's a great bird to bring out to introduce to everybody. He hatched here as well. Okay, so you have a great breeding program. Again, you can come out here to SeaWorld uh, starting June 19th, but you can make a reservation today. So go online, SeaWorld.com, and you guys are just doing such amazing things out here. We could talk forever, right, about sure, the penguins? Yeah, of course we could. You want to say bye, Freckles? You want to say hi, Fiona and Mike? Back to you guys. Freckles has got Freckles has got a wicked kind of Game of Thrones, <laughs> such a cool hairdo. Oh, that that little four-month-old <laughs> baby house just trying to snuggle in there and get yeah, out. Oh. Okay, that's that's fascinating. Right? All that information about that. Thank you so much, Jen. Hey, tomorrow on SA Live, want to cruise into the weekend with a nice cold one? Oh, yeah, it looks good. We check out some brand new beers hitting the shelves and even have a challenge for all you beer connoisseurs. Plus, simple gifts that say a lot. We're helping you make that heartfelt gift for dad, including the best way to give a gift card. That and more tomorrow at 1 on SA Live. All right, earlier we asked you, how do you like your corn? You know, do you eat it around or across? Right? Ooh, mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. lots of sweet cream butter. Yes. Yes, Lisa. Mm-hmm. And Monday, Gonzalez says, as an Apache, we were taught to eat our corn from left to right. A beautiful traditional Apache story is told to us. Uh, nada corn is used in many ways and in ceremony for us. Not one part of the corn is wasted, nor is the pollen that is produced. Oh my gosh. Interesting. Elizabeth says I like mine with butter, mayo, queso fresco, and chili powder. Yes. I'm an across kind of a girl. That sounds really good. <laughs> and it's, if it's on the grill and you have a little bit of, the, of that char, a little bit of that yes. char on there, yeah. Sometimes just some salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. You're going to go grill up.